Today is the day. Today is the day when you finally learn how to create one of those pesky product tours. For some reason, I always thought of them as being super complicated, hard things to do, but that couldn't be more further from the truth. They are pretty easy to set up if you're using a library like IntroJS. So in this series, we'll take a look over how we can set up a product tour using IntroJS in a Laravel and InertiaJS application. We'll set up tour steps, see what problems can arise when doing so, save the tour completion status in the browser and on the server when dealing with authenticated users, see how we can customize the tour to fit our design and style, and then finally, extract the whole thing into a view composable to reuse it anytime we need to create a new tour. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install IntroJS using npm. So I'll open my terminal and type in npm install intro.js. Once that's done, I'll open my app.css file from the resources folder and import its stylesheet. So I'll do import node modules intro.js slash intro.js.css. Next up, I will open the page component where I want to add the tour, which is the show talk page. I'll scroll down to the setup method and create a new instance of the tour. And let's also make sure we import intro.js. So we'll do import intro.js from intro.js. Now we have two ways of adding steps to our product tour. We can either use data attributes like data title, data intro, and others, or we can go with a JSON configuration where we can define an array of steps. I prefer the second approach because today most of our Laravel applications are built on some kind of component system. That can be Vue, React, Svelte, or just Blade partials. And that would make dealing with data attributes a bit cumbersome as you'd have to open 10 different files in order to edit the tour. So having all these steps in one place seems to be more manageable for me. Now back to our page component, we can set the tour steps by calling the setOptions method and passing it an object with a steps key that holds our array of steps. To start off the tour, I would like to have like a greeting card in the middle of the screen. We can add that by adding an object with a title and an intro message. Now we can tell the tour to start by calling the start method, go into browser, refresh the page, and here is our welcome card. That's how you show a card in the middle of the screen. To have something highlighted, you need an HTML reference of the element you want to highlight. So let's try out an example. We could do intro and then find similar talks. And then we need to pass it the element we want to highlight. To get the element, we could do document, query selector, and pass in the ID. Now, if I scroll up to find the categories, I don't have the ID, so we'll need to add it. Save, go in the browser, refresh, click next. And the tooltip appears, but the element is not highlighted. The reason for that is code that runs in the setup method here, this code is executed before any HTML is rendered. So when this runs, it will return null. To fix this, we need to wrap this whole tour in the onMounted hook. So we'll do onMounted. And then we'll paste everything here. Let's import the onMounted hook, save, go in the browser, refresh, click next, and here it is. Our categories are highlighted. Next up, I will add IDs to all the elements I want to highlight, and then add the rest of the tour steps. I'll speed up this part to save some of your time.
I've added all the tour steps. Let's go in the browser and have a look. I'll refresh and I'll start going through the tour. We have categories, the recommend button, the follow button, my notes, rewatch, notepad, and login. Now, one thing we need to consider is what happens if one of the elements we want to highlight is no longer visible on the screen. Let's take this notepad button for an example. When I resize the window to a smaller one, the button is no longer present on the screen. So if I refresh and go through the tour, when we'll reach this now hidden button, the tooltip will appear, but there is no element to highlight. It would be nice to skip steps attached to hidden elements. We've seen that if the element we want to highlight, in our case this notepad button, is no longer present on the screen, when we go through the tour, it will still show up a tooltip in the top left corner of the screen. Depending on your use case, it might make sense to skip this step entirely. To do that, we'll need to filter the array of steps and only allow the ones attached to visible elements on the screen or that aren't attached at all, like this welcoming step. So let's put this array into its own variable. And then here, let's filter it. We'll start with the first case, where the step is not attached to any element, so it doesn't have an element property. We'll do if not step has own property element, then just return true. This is the case of the welcoming card, where it doesn't have an element key. And then, to check whether or not an element is visible on the screen, we can ask for its bounding rectangles. If there aren't any, it means the element is hidden. So we'll do return step element get client rects length. And to convert this into a boolean, we can do bang bang. And now if I go in the browser and refresh, we get an error saying cannot read properties of no. That's because I forgot to place the steps array inside the unmounted hook. Let's try again, refresh, and next, 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 and now we should hit that notepad button, and we are sent straight to login, which is great. However, if we start with a large screen, where the notepad button is visible, so let's do this here, where the notepad button is visible and then resize to a smaller one where the notepad button gets hidden, we have the same problem. So if I go next, 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 the tooltip is displayed again. That's because we're only filtering the steps when the page loads. We need to apply the same filtering when the window is resized. So let's do that. I'll add an event listener for the resize event. So I'll do window, add event listener, resize, and then pass the function. And then here we'll do tour, set option, steps, and then pass it the filtered steps. Finally, we also need to tell IntroJS to refresh the steps, and we can do that using tour, refresh, and then pass through as a parameter. Let's go into browser, refresh, here's our notepad button, resize the window, go next, 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 and we are skipped to the login button, which is what we wanted. Finally, what I want to do is give this anonymous function a name so we can remove the event listener when the user completes or exits the tour. So let's say we'll call it refresh tour steps. Let's define it here. Save, go in the browser, refresh. Let's make sure everything is still working. And it does. And now here on the tour, we can say 
tour on exit we'll do window remove event listener resize refresh tour steps and we'll do the same thing when the user completes the tour so on complete and we remove the event listener another thing we should do is make sure we debounce this function call as listening to the resize event can cause massive performance issues so let's wrap this into a debounce let's say 200 milliseconds and let's make sure we import debounce from lodash now that I'm looking over this filtering function, there's also the case where the step element might be null. So let's make sure we cover that as well. And we can even extract this into a separate function to remove some of the duplication. We'll do step is displayable. And pass it the step. And we'll use the same function here. Let's define the function. Save, go in the browser, refresh. Let's resize it a bit. And next, 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 next. And everything seems to be working. Now that our tour is up and running, it highlights everything we want, it skips steps attached to hidden or missing elements, we want to make sure we somehow stop showing the tour to users who've already seen it. The easiest way to achieve that is by setting a tour key in the browser's local storage, and then whenever the tour needs to run, we check the existence of that tour key, and if it's present, we skip the tour, otherwise we let it run. So let's do that. Here on the unmounted hook, before we do anything, let's check if the local storage contains the tour key. We'll do if window local storage get item and let's call it tour show talk. If that's true, let's break the execution by returning early. So now when this unmounted hook runs, if the tour key is present, the execution stops here. Anything after this line is ignored. Next up, we need to make sure we add the tour key in the local storage whenever the user completes or exits the tour. And we can do that here in the on exit and on complete callbacks. We'll do window, local storage, set item, we'll pass it the tour key, and let's set that to true. We'll do the same for the on complete callback. Now, if I go in the browser and refresh, we'll see the tour appearing. We'll go through it, complete it, but when I refresh again, the tour is no longer starting. That's because if I check the local storage, we'll see that our tour key has been set to true. And that's it. That's how you can stop the tour from being shown over and over again. However, once the local storage is cleared, if we refresh, the tour will appear again. As a more permanent solution for authenticated users, we could store the tour completion status on the server. We've seen how we can store the tour completion status in the browser's local storage. Let's see how we can do that on the server for the authenticated users. The first thing we need to do is come up with a route, an endpoint we could call when the tour exits or is completed. That could be something like slash tours. Here, where the tour exits, we could make a put request using Axios and pass the name of the tour as a parameter. And of course, we need to do the same on complete. Next, we'll need to add this new tour's endpoint. So I'll open my routes file, go under the auth middleware and say route put slash tours, tours controller, and then the update action. Let's create the tours controller and I'll open my terminal and say php artisan make controller tours controller. Let's import it, open it, and add the update action. The first thing I'm going to do is to validate the request. So I'll do request 
validate, tour, and this needs to be required, and a string. Then a good place to store the tour would be a JSON column on the users table. Let's pretend for a second that column already exists. We'll grab the current user from the request, call the update method, tours, and then here we need to merge any existing tours the user may have with the one we get in the request. So we'll do array merge, user tours, and let's set the default to an empty array with the tour we are getting in the request set to true and then return an empty response. Before we go any further, let's make a quick test to see the request being made. I'll add a DD here with request all, go in the browser, log in, Go to a talk page, complete the tour, and the request is being made, but it's made twice. And that can only mean that the on exit is called on complete as well. So let's check that. I'll add a console. Go in the browser, clear the storage, refresh, and if I complete the tour, the on exit callback is executed as well, which means we don't even need the on complete one because they both do the same thing. So let's remove this one. Go in the browser. Clear the site data, log in, go to our talk page, and here's the request with our tour parameter. Let's continue by adding that missing tours column. I'll open the terminal and type in PHP artisan, make migration, add tours to users, open the migration file, and add the tours column, which will be a JSON column, and nullable. Let's drop the column on the down method, and then we need to make sure we cast the tours property to JSON. So I'll open the user model, and add it to the cast array. Let's run the migration to add the tours column. Go to the tours controller to remove the DD and in the browser to test everything out. I'll clear out the site data, log in, go to a tour talk, exit the tour, and if I go to the users table, refresh, here is our show talk tour. Now let's make sure we check the user tours in our own mounted hook. So here where we check the local storage, we also need to check the user. So we'll do or user.value tours show talk. So now if there is a tour show talk item in the local storage or the current user has show talk set to true, we will break the execution and not display the tour. Now we know our user has completed the tour as it shows in the database, which means that if I clear the site data and log in again, go to a talk page, I shouldn't see the tour anymore. And I don't, which is what we wanted. Let's take a look over what I believe to be the most important configuration options IntraJS comes with. There are many of them, I'll just show you the most important ones. Since we don't provide a way to restart the tour once the user exits, 
I want to make sure they don't accidentally skip the tour. Currently, the tour exits when you click on the overlay or when you press the escape key. There are two configuration options that can help us with that. Here, where we set the options, we can set exit on esc to false and then exit on overlay click to false. And now if I clear the site data and refresh, I won't be exiting the door by accidentally clicking on the overlay. Same thing when I press the escape key. Now, since we're talking about the overlay, there's also an option to set the opacity for it. So we can do overlay opacity, and then let's say 0 0.8. It needs to be a value between 0 and 1. Let's refresh. And here it is a bit darker. Let's set that to 1. And there we go. Next up, we also have the ability to customize all the labels. We can customize the skip label, which at the moment is just the letter X. Let's set that to skip. The next label. The previous label, which is prev label. And of course, the done label. Let's refresh, and here it is. We have the skip, forward, previous, and if I go next, 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 we have the done label, which is now changed to finish. We also have a few options for showing the progress of the tour. We have show bullets, show progress, and this will show a progress bar, and show step numbers. Let's refresh. And here they are. We have the bullets, the progress bar, and the numbers. I'll just keep the progress bar. So I'll set this to false. False. And now, for one of the most important options, we have disable interaction. And we'll set that to true. This will prevent the user from clicking on the elements being highlighted. So now, when I go through the tour, I won't be able to click on the AI category and leave the tour. I can only skip it or choose to complete it. I won't be able to click on recommend, on follow, any of the highlighted items. These are probably the most important options you need to consider when using IntroJS. Now, to further customize the appearance of the tooltips, we can open the app CSS file and start overriding some of the styles. To figure out the class names, we can just use the Chrome inspector. I'll go to Elements, and let's say we want this, which is IntroJS tooltip header. And let's say Apply, Flex, Justify Between, Items, center, padding right to padding left four. Now to push the skip label to the edge, we can take the title and say apply flex one. Now let's customize the skip button. So it's this class right here. We could do, let's remove all the padding. So we'll do apply P0 text access font normal and let's say tracking wider uppercase and let's change the color to text gray 500 there we go and now for the hover we can select the skip oh it's already here let's make this a bit smaller and say focus or hover hover and on hover we'll do text black let's continue with the content let's select it and it's introduced tooltip text 
Let's reduce the padding. So we'll do apply PY2 PX4 and maybe change the text color. That's better. Next up, we have the progress bar. And if we inspect this, we have an IntraJS progress and the progress bar for the blue part. So let's do IntraJS progress, change the background to BG gray 200. Okay, and then for the progress bar, we can do apply BG orange 500. And that's better. Next up, let's remove this border right here. And we have tooltip buttons. Can grab this and say apply border none. There we go. And let's style the buttons. Let's grab the class. And we have introduce button. And we'll do apply py. 2px4 font medium text sm text gray 800 bg white let's give it some rounded borders we'll do rounded md border border gray 300 and that looks nice then on the hover we'll do introduce button hover apply bg gray 100. Let's refresh. And if I hover, it looks nice, but the border is a bit weird. Let's keep the border to border gray 300. That's better. Now for the focus style, let's select the button, focus, and let's style it. We'll do apply BG white border gray 300 ring two ring orange 500. And let's also give it an offset. So we'll do ring offset two. That's better. And I think we're done. Let's go through the tour. Next, next. Okay, I think that's it. One more thing you could do is style individual tooltips. So if I go to the show component here on the steps array, we can actually set a tooltip class. Let's say welcome tooltip and then categories tooltip and now I can grab these two classes go to app.css and let's say here I can go and say welcome tooltip introduce tooltip text and say apply text red 500 and then for the categories tooltip I can do something different like text blue 500 yeah so here it is if you want to play with different styles for different tooltips you can totally do that by setting a tooltip class for every step or just for the steps you want to customize and that's it. That's how you can customize IntroJS to fit your project design and style. Right now, the only way for us to reuse this tour code on a different page is by copying and paste it and then find and replace the tour name. It would be nice if we could extract the tour functionality in one place and then be able to reuse it on as many tours we want by just calling a function and passing a few parameters. We can do that by extracting a view composable. Think of composables as being a much improved version of the old view 2 mixins. We could do something like this. We'd call a use tour function and then pass it an object as a parameter. 
we'll need the user so we can determine whether or not they are logged in and if they are already seen the tour. We'll need the tour name. And finally, we'll need to pass it the steps. Now let's create the use tour composable file. And I already have a composable directory under resources.js. So I'll do use tour.js. And this will just export a function. We know we'll receive an object as a parameter, so let's go ahead and destructure it to make it easier to work with. We'll have name, user, and steps. Now let's go back to our show component and grab everything tour related, which is basically this unmounted hook. Paste it here. Let's go back and import the use tour composable. Let's remove these two. And now if I go in the browser and refresh, we get cannot read properties of null. If I click here, oh, it's the user.value. Since now we're sending the user as a parameter, we can remove the dot value. So let's search for it. Yeah, this is the only occurrence. Let's give it another go. Refresh, and here's the tour. working just as it did before. Let's go ahead and replace all the show talk references with the name we pass as a parameter and then do the same for the steps array. So I'll grab this, see if I can find any occurrences and we have one here and we'll do name and then the same thing for this string. And finally, I think we have one more here. Yeah, this is the last one. And then for the steps, I think it's enough to remove this declaration right here. Let's save, go in the browser, refresh, and it appears we only have one step. That's because we have the unmounted hook here, but where those elements are grabbed here, we don't have the unmounted hook. And as I said before, code inside the setup method is executed before any HTML is rendered. To fix that, we could replace the steps array with a method that returns the steps. And then inside the tour, we could do, where are the steps here? And here, we could just call that method. If I refresh again, everything works as it did before. Finally, there are a couple of visual and functional improvements we could make. Let's start with the visual ones by chaining these tour methods. Here, we'll grab this. And call the methods directly. Functional-wise, we could check if the user is authenticated when we make the put request to update the tour, otherwise it doesn't really make sense to send it. So if user, then make the put request. On the same note, if a guest user has previously completed the tour in the browser, it makes sense to also update the tour status on the server when they log in. So let's go up here, and if we have a user, and it has completed the tour, or the tour was marked as completed in the local storage, but not on the server, we should update the tour status. Actually, these are quite hard to read, so let's extract them as variables. So we have marked as seen in browser, which is this one. And 
and then we have marked as seen on server which is this one and let's also move the tour so let's grab this and say tour set options let's also move this up and just return the tour Another thing I want to do is allow the user of this composable to pass or override additional options. So we could use the spread operator on an options parameter. And here we could do options and set the default. And also return the tour. And I think that's it. Let's test it out in the browser. Refresh. Next, 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 next. And I've completed the short talk tour. And let's say I would go on a different page component and try to use this use tour composable to display another tour. Let's call that tour talk page tour. If I refresh, the tour should appear again. And it doesn't. Hmm, we have a tour undefined key. That's because instead of name, I passed tour as a parameter. So let's do name. Refresh again. And here it is. Let's go back and undo the name to show talk and say name. Refresh again. And here they are. We have three tours, one created by accident. So now, whenever we want to display a tour, we can just import the use tour composable, pass it the user, the name of the tour, the steps, and we're good to go. And that concludes our product tour series. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.